let's explore the integration between Salesforce and CVent and how you can leverage it. From a basic level, this integration is helping us identify how constituents participate in our events. Before actually logging into Cvent and Salesforce to show you how this integration behaves, just want to try to explain it at a high level. So whenever any event is launched in Cvent, a corresponding campaign is created in Salesforce. And a campaign in Salesforce simply serves as a bucket or a bin. And so now that this bucket exists, you can start putting people in it. And so that happens automatically. And so not only was the campaign created automatically, when the primary registrant starts registering for the event, they will also automatically be added to that campaign. And so this is how we're really tracking who's registering for events all the way up to who's actually attending those events. With that basic understanding of the Cvent Salesforce integration out of the way, I think the natural next step is to walk into a really good example. And so how would you find the corresponding Salesforce campaign? So I have gone ahead and put the naming convention um, that every campaign name um, that captures these event information follows the same format. And so it starts with what's indicating a campus, followed by an underscore, which indicates the start date of the event. And after that, it has another underscore and then it's the event title that you gave your event. And so knowing those three pieces can really help you find um, your campaigns in Salesforce. I'm going to go ahead and actually hop into Cvent. So you can see I've already pulled up um, a past event, and this will just be a good example. And so one of the first things I encourage people to do is if you're looking at your event in Cvent, you can use the title that you gave that event to search for it in Salesforce. And so pretty straightforward, I'm just going to go ahead and highlight um, this event title so that I can copy it. And then I'm going to hop into Salesforce. So I've already logged in here, but I love using this top global search that really just searches across everything in Salesforce. So once it's completed searching, I do like to pay attention um, to these kind of blocks that exist. Um, right here it's indicating campaigns as well as email sends. Um, but I know I am looking for cam a campaign. And so I pr feel pretty confident drilling into that one result. So when you open a campaign, you're first presented details about that campaign that were pulled over from the event that you created. Oftentimes, what I find even more interesting is the second tab that's listed as related. And when you open that up, you're able to view the campaign members. So these are the folks who were automatically added to your campaign when they registered. And so that's a part of the automatic integration that's happening. And so if you wanted to view everyone who took an action with this event, you could look at those individuals. Some other tips for searching for your campaign in Salesforce based off of information that you put into your Cvent event is the start date of your event. So here I can tell um, that our event is June 26th of 2019. 
And so knowing the naming convention that we use in Salesforce for those campaigns, 2019-06-26. And again, I, can, I, I wanna pay attention to these blocks. I know I'm looking for a campaign. And in this case, two events came up. And the reason for this is there were two events hosted across the whole system um, that I have access to with events that were hosted on both of these days. And so at that point, you would really want to pay attention to the event title. But I now know I'm looking for that house staff intern welcome event, and I could drill into it that way. If for some reason you're still really struggling to find the campaign, I often like to use the event code. And that's because it's unique to every single event. And so if you're not finding um, the campaign when you search for the event code, in this case, I found it, um, that would lead me to believe that there's a reason you do not have access to it. Um, so I would go ahead and watch the next video that indicates why am I not finding my campaign. If you're having trouble finding a campaign in Salesforce when you search, there's a good chance you simply do not have access to it. So I'm going to walk through a bit more detail on how does one get access and some of it happens automatically and when that doesn't work you have to rely on some manual pieces. So let's look at how that plays. So right now I'm looking at this 2019 house staff intern welcome event and I really like navigating to the event details, the second tab, and then in the far left column under general, looking at the last item listed, which is event status. Again, that event details on the far left bottom event status. And what I wanna show you here specifically is who created this event. And so right here, I can see that Jack created this. And so this is corresponding to who automatically owns that campaign. And so if I'm to hop on over to Salesforce, um, I already navigated to this campaign, I searched for it. Something you'll see up at the top right is campaign owner. And it's the same Zach. And so the system, when it automatically creates this campaign, it automatically, we set it up to know, hey, if Zach created it here, he needs to be the owner here. And so if, if that's the case, if somebody else on your team is creating your events, but you need access to it, the good thing is they can go ahead and share it with whoever they want. And so um, they can go ahead and add a new permission, um, sharing it with either a public group that they're a part of, um, or with an individual. Um, just one user maybe needs access to it. So that is how you would give that access, give that read write. So I've gone ahead and pulled up another example of when this integration would not work perfectly. The good news is it is the exception, not the rule. And so Again, in this example, I'm going to go ahead and look at ex this exploring healthcare event, but I'll look at the event details. And I'll, again, under general, in the far left, in the bottom, look at event status. And so I want to see who created this event. And in this case, it was Lindsay K. Andrews. And so um, I want to go look at this in Salesforce. And so as we recently reviewed, one of the best ways to do that um, is to just look at the title of the event. I can hop on over to Salesforce and in the top, search for it. It has pulled up two different events. And so that tells me that there are two different events in Cvent with the exact same name. The good news is there's some other indicators here to make sure you're looking at the right one. 
And so I actually want to go back to this event and um, see what the start date is. And so it's actually June 4th. And so when I go back in Salesforce, I can look at um, either the campaign name, the date that's in there, and this one indicates the 4th. So that's really great to see. So in this example, even though that in the event, the person who created the event, Lindsay, when I look at that campaign here, the owner, it does not indicate Lindsay. And the reason for that is Lindsay is not a Salesforce user. And so there's no way for us to figure out who should own this campaign. And so if you, the person creating your events is a Cvent only user, you would want to ask your e-com specialist to share this campaign with you so that you can exclude it. Um, so the information is there, it exists in Salesforce. It's really just a matter of, do you have access to it? Um, and if you don't, how are you gonna get that access? So always your e-com specialist is a great resource for that. <clears throat> 